Okay, we're going to start learning about C++. And in a little while, we'll write our first C++ program. First of all, though, let's talk a bit about what C++ is. Now, C++ is one of the most popular programming languages in the world. It was developed out of the C programming language, which was the building block for the first networked operating system, Unix. C++ retains almost all of C as something called a subset, but it adds better ways to do things and some new capabilities. Now, in your textbook, Dawson says that C++ is so popular in game programming for three reasons. First, it's fast, blazingly fast if it's written well. Second, it's flexible. Uh, it supports object-oriented programming, but it doesn't force a particular coding style on the programmer. And third, it's well-supported. There's a wealth of assets out there available to the programmers. APIs, 2D engines, 3D engines, physics engines, and so forth. <clears throat> now, I would argue that these three reasons not only explain the popularity of C++ in game programming, but in all kinds of programming. All right, now, <clears throat> when you run a program on your computer, you're running something called an executable file. In the Windows world, that file usually has an extension of .exe. In Unix land, which would include Macs, the file might not have that extension, but it will usually have what's called an executable bit turned on in its file permissions. It takes a few steps to get to that executable file, though. The first thing that the programmer does is use some sort of an editor to write the source code. Uh, this would be, the source code is a file that has the extension CPP for C++. The editor is kind of like a word processor, but I wouldn't recommend trying to use Microsoft Word for this. If you install an IDE, an integrated development environment, uh, the IDE will usually include your editor for you. Now, if you want to go bare bones, you can use any text editor, even the Notepad app that comes on Windows. I'd recommend, though, um, programs with a little more features. There's a Notepad Plus for Windows, which is a free download, and it will help you keep track of your code and, and make sure that you don't have any major errors. On the Mac side of things, um, I use a program called BB Edit, which you have to pay for, but the, uh, the developers, Barebone Software, do have a stripped down free cousin called Text Wrangler, which is also really good. And any Mac users in the class, uh, I think this would do well for you. Now, once the programmer saves that source file, he or she has to run it through what's called a compiler. Now, the compiler is an application that reads the code and then translates it into an object file. After the object file is created, then it goes through the linking process. The linker links that object file to any external files the program needs to run. After all of that's done, the executable is created. On a Windows machine, this executable will have the extension .exe. On Unix-based computers, what you'll usually see is a file created named a.out, O-U-T. Um, you can change that through the command line switches, but uh, you'd have to explore different ways of doing that. For now, just leave it at the default if you're using the command line compiler. Once all of that's done, the user can launch that program by just running the executable. So I talked about an IDE. Um, the beauty of the IDE is that it can automate all of this for you. The IDE gives you an all-in-one tool for writing your programs, provides you with an editor, a compiler, a linker, and usually other tools. I've given you the URL for three popular IDEs. Um, two of these, uh, Bloodshed Dev++ and Microsoft Visual C++ 2010 Express, 
They're absolutely free, but they're Windows only. The third one, NetBeans, is also free, but it's available both on Windows and Mac. If you go with NetBeans, you need to make sure that you choose the right options to include C++ compiler support. Um, the other thing that you can do on a Mac is you can use Xcode. I might not recommend that, at least at first. Um, Xcode is really designed for Mac programming, iPhone programming, iPad programming, etc. And you can do the type of programming that we'll be doing in the, in the book using Xcode, but it's probably more difficult than it really needs to be. So if all you have is Xcode, I would recommend st sticking with the command line options. Um, you could use something like BB Editor Text Wrangler to write your source code, but then just go to the terminal and compile it from the command line. Now, the next thing we need to talk about are errors. Now, sometimes, or if you typo as much as I do most of the time, uh, when you're programming, you're going to get errors. Even the best programmers in the world, they will write programs that they have to debug several times, and they still keep finding errors. You have to fix those errors and then start all over again with your compile process. There's three basic types of errors you're going to run across. The first one is a compile error. Now this happens during compilation. Usually this will stop the compiler from creating any object at all. These can be syntax errors, which means the compiler just doesn't understand what commands you've included in your code. It could also be caused by something like a typo. You forgot a semicolon at the end of the line. You transposed two letters in, in your programming. Um, anything like that. The second type of error is a link error. This happens during the linking process, and it usually means that some file or object that your program is trying to access just isn't there. Uh, to solve that, fix the reference, and then compile it again. The third type is called a runtime error. You won't find these until you actually run the program. Um, and if you've ever seen a program hang or crash, that's been quite often a runtime error. Now, a little more subtle type of a runtime error, though, is what's called a logical error. A logical error will make your program behave in a way that you might not have expected. Um, for example, you're playing a game. Your character is a normal guy. He doesn't have any superpowers. We're not talking Superman here. He walks off the edge of a cliff and doesn't fall. Unless that character somehow was able to levitate 500 feet above the ground, that's a logical error. Okay, so that covers a few of the real basics of C++ programming. If you have any questions about these concepts or these ideas, please let me know. Otherwise, your homework for today is to get some sort of compiler installed. Uh, once you've decided what you're going to use, if you're going with Microsoft Visual C++, the back of your book, Appendix A, describes how to install it and walks you through the steps of creating your first program. Um, Either tomorrow or the next day, I will we'll go ahead and cover the next section of the book, which is the first program in Chapter 1. So, good luck. Uh, let me know if you have any questions or problems, and I'll be back in a day or so with uh, that first program. Mm -hmm.